You may recall that in the last episode, I mentioned the spreader beams that were delivered to the Starbase launch site on December 30th. Although it was initially thought that the spreader beams would be used to lift Starship 24 from suborbital launch pad B, it has now been revealed that the original purpose of the beams is something else. On Monday, January 2nd, SpaceX connected the spreader beams to several counterweights that were previously used by cranes at Starbase to prevent overturning when carrying heavy objects. On Wednesday, teams installed the spreader beam and counterweight assembly on the orbital launch mount. The orbital launch mount consists of 20 hold-down clamps to secure the Starship launch vehicle in place. The launch vehicle will topple if the clamps fail, and depending on the direction it falls, it might severely harm the launch pad, the launch tower, or the orbital tank farm. SpaceX has never fully loaded a Starship rocket before because they have never tested the clamp's ability to support a fully loaded vehicle. The new load tester was mounted on the launch mount to mimic the mass of a fully loaded Starship. In this way SpaceX can test whether the clamps can hold a fully fueled vehicle securely. The load test machine is designed in such a way that it can hold on to two opposite clamps at a time. In this video shared on Twitter by Ryan Hansen Space, you can see how the mechanism will connect to the clamps and how it will shift from clamps to clamps after each load test. A fully loaded Starship launch vehicle weighs 4,536 metric tons and 20 clamps together must be capable of supporting that weight. This implies that each clamp must be able to support about 227 metric tons. Assuming a 10% safety factor, SpaceX must load about 500 metric tons of counterweights into the load tester to test two clamps simultaneously. The load test on the first two clamps took place on Thursday. SpaceX tested the load-bearing capacity of the clamps by raising and lowering the counterweight off the ground several times. On Friday morning, teams shifted the load tester to the next pair of clamps and later tested the load-bearing capacity of both clamps. Over the next 21 hours, teams relocated the load tester to the remaining eight pairs of clamps while testing their load-bearing capacity. The load tester was removed from the orbital launch mount on Saturday morning, concluding the structural test. If the test data is satisfactory and SpaceX is confident that the clamps can support a fully fueled Starship rocket, the next steps will be a full-stack wet dress rehearsal and a 33-engine static fire test. A road closure is scheduled for Sunday evening to perform transportation operations, if the weather permits. If Booster 7 is rolled out to the launch site from the Mega Bay on Sunday, we could see a Ship 24 and Booster 7 full stack very soon. An unusually long 15-hour road closure is scheduled for January 9, so it looks like something big will happen on Monday. SpaceX may be planning to stack Ship 24 on top of Booster 7 and perform a wet dress rehearsal on Monday. Keep an eye on the LabPadre YouTube channel to receive live updates from Starbase. After spending several weeks at suborbital launch pad B, undergoing numerous repairs and passing a static fire test, a crane lifted Starship 24 and placed it on a transport stand on Thursday afternoon. It looks like SpaceX is not yet ready to lift Starships with the new jig delivered to Starbase two weeks ago. Please check out my previous update to learn more about this new Starship lifting jig that will make the nose cone lifting points redundant. There are currently no indications that Ship 24 will be brought back to the build site. Therefore, it may be assumed that Ship 24 will be placed on top of Booster 7 for a full-stack wet dress rehearsal after the booster has arrived on the launch mount. The launch tower arms were raised and lowered twice within 30 minutes on Thursday afternoon. This may be a rehearsal before the upcoming full-stack attempt. Works on the future Starship and Super Heavy prototypes are ongoing at the build site. On Wednesday morning, teams moved a payload bay door cover into the high bay. Minutes later, the cover was welded over Ship 25's payload bay door, permanently closing the opening. Starlink satellites were supposed to be deployed into orbit through the payload bay door during the orbital mission of Ship 25. But now that the door is permanently closed, it has been confirmed that Ship 25 will not carry any payloads on its mission. Starship 24's payload bay door was permanently closed in September, and Starship 26 has no payload bay door installed. SpaceX has already installed a satellite dispenser and payload bay door in the cargo section of Ship 27, meaning, Ship 27 could be the first Starship to carry cargo into orbit. Starship 26 was removed from its welding turntable on Tuesday night. This indicates that all major welding work has been completed, and SpaceX can now begin installing electrical and hydraulic lines, aero covers, antennas, and other equipment on the ship. Ship 28's common dome was sleeved and flipped on Tuesday morning, giving us a look inside the dome that separates the ship's methane and oxygen propellant tanks. All three domes of Ship 28 are now fully sleeved and ready for stacking. 
Super Heavy Booster 10's methane tank section was moved from the Mega Bay to the Mid Bay on Thursday morning. This gave SpaceX enough room to move Booster 7 out of the Mega Bay. Super Heavy Booster 10 is now three stacks away from its basic structure. A new booster aft section ring was spotted at Starbase Friday afternoon. This is the section on which the outer 20 engines of the booster will be mounted. This new section with several pipes on its exterior could be a pathfinder for future Super Heavy boosters. At Kennedy Space Center, on early Friday morning, teams moved the rocket catching and stacking arm carriage to launch Complex 39A from SpaceX's facility at Roberts Road. Two red frames are currently being built near the Starship launch tower at Pad 39A. They resemble the frames used as a pre-assembly jig at Starbase 18 months ago. Once the tower arms arrive at Pad 39A, the carriage and arms will be joined together with the help of this pre-assembly jig. Later the tower arms will be lifted and installed on the launch tower with the help of a crane. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. SpaceX launched its first mission of the year atop a Falcon 9 rocket on January 3 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The mission, dubbed Transporter 6, which carried 114 satellites for operators in 23 countries, marked SpaceX's sixth dedicated smallsat rideshare mission and 200th flight overall. The Falcon 9 booster featured on the mission, B1060, marked its 15th successful launch and landing, tying a record for the most flown booster in SpaceX's inventory. Nearly an hour after liftoff, the rocket's upper stage deployed its 114 payloads into a 525-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit, inclined 97.6 degrees to the equator. The process, which involved 82 separate deployments, took more than half an hour to complete. The largest single customer on the launch, in terms of the number of satellites, was Planet, which had 36 of its Super Dove Earth imaging satellites on board. The Super Dove satellites, which have optical cameras with sensors in eight spectral bands, supplies remote sensing data to commercial customers, intelligence agencies, and environmental monitoring groups. The Transporter 6 mission also deployed the 178-kilogram EOS Sat-1 satellite for EOS data analytics. The EOS Sat constellation consists of seven small optical satellites created to support the implementation of sustainable agriculture methods and environmental monitoring of forest lands by providing high-quality data for analysis. Several of the payloads on Transporter 6 are orbital transfer vehicles that will later deploy satellites into various orbits. Be sure to check out the link in the description if you're interested in learning more about all 114 satellites launched on the Transporter 6 mission. The Transporter SmallSat rideshare program began with the Transporter 1 mission in January 2021 that launched 143 small satellites and transfer vehicles into orbit. SpaceX charges customers $1.2 million to send a 200-kilogram payload into sun-synchronous orbit on a dedicated rideshare flight. According to SpaceX, the price is enabled by cost reductions from reusing Falcon 9 rocket hardware. The next SpaceX rideshare mission, Transporter 7, is currently targeted for April 2023. SpaceX, whose 61 launches in 2022 were nearly double the 31 launches it conducted in 2021, will attempt to set another launch record in 2023. According to Elon Musk, the company will attempt as many as 100 launches this year, a total that likely includes its Starship vehicle, whose first orbital launch is expected in the first half of 2023. Please check out my latest video that discusses all the 100 SpaceX missions of 2023. Link in the description. Virgin Orbit is gearing up for its first launch from the United Kingdom as soon as January 9. If the weather is favorable, a modified Boeing 747, named Cosmic Girl, will take off from Spaceport Cornwall on Monday, with a 21-meter-long Launcher 1 rocket packed full of satellites. The space plane will then be flown to an altitude of approximately 10.7 kilometers, where the rocket will be dropped. After a four-second freefall, the first stage engine, Newton 3, bursts to life, accelerating the rocket to more than 12,800 kilometers per hour. Once the fuel is spent, the first stage detaches, and the second stage Newton 4 engine kicks off a series of burns to circularize its orbit. After payload fairing separation, the second stage will deploy the satellite into its intended orbit. Monday's mission, dubbed Start Me Up, is the first international launch for Launcher 1 and the sixth flight overall. All five previous missions took off from the Mojave Air and Spaceport in California. The January 9th mission will carry satellites from seven customers into space, including commercial and government payloads from several nations. If the launch doesn't happen on January 9th, Virgin Orbit has a backup date of January 18 in place. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover has kicked off 2023 with the successful placement of the fourth and fifth sample tubes at the Three Forks region of the Red Planet. 
Perseverance has brought 43 titanium sample tubes to Mars, 38 of which will be filled with Martian dust and rock samples. The remaining five tubes will be used to measure the cleanliness of the sampling system. While the rover analyzes many of these itself, some samples are stored away in sample tubes for a future mission, called the Mars Sample Return Campaign. Based on the architecture of the campaign, Perseverance would deliver samples to a future robotic lander, which will carry a rocket to blast the samples off the Martian surface. A spacecraft orbiting the red planet would capture the sample container and return it safely to Earth, perhaps as early as 2033. But in case Perseverance gets stuck somewhere, the samples dropped at Three Forks will be collected by a pair of helicopters that will be arriving with the lander, and they will then be transported to the return vehicle. Perseverance dropped its first sample on December 21, and five more will be dropped in the coming days. Each sample tube weighs nearly 57 grams and has a white exterior coating to protect them from the sun's heat, which could alter the chemical composition of the samples. The 15.2 cm long sample tubes also have laser-etched serial numbers outside so that the team can identify them and what they contain. The sample return mission will help to answer some of the most fundamental questions regarding Mars and the possibility of life within. Thank you for joining me for this week's science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.